Good morning. So on a Saturday, we decided to go for brunch in one of those tea farms in uh, Limuro Kiambeku tea farm. Uh, I decided to book it online and put the process on there, but then later on I just decided to call directly and do it by in person. And I can't wait to go because this was one of the farms where the guy was the first person to export tea and coffee from Kenya. So I'm really glad to just go and see the history and kind of have my brunch and eat and have fun and have a you know, a tour around the tea farm. So I'm pretty much excited. Can't wait. And we finally got here, so Hi. I'm waiting for him to get out of the toilet. Now we can go check out what they have set up for us for the brunch and also for the tea farm. I'm so pretty excited, really. To be so the lady came and washed our hands, gave us sanitizer, and checked our temperature. Yeah. Remember, we forgot our masks in the car. <laughs> seed mm. which originally came from India mm -hmm. from Assam so we actually grow the Assam variety of tea you use the seed it takes five years before you can actually pick from it this is Fiona the granddaughter of Abby McDonald and also our host for the day she taught us a lot about tea as you're also about to find out right now but also the leaf is very small mm -hmm. um, and everybody's paid by weight so over the years they've developed a clone and that's really what we'd be picking your bud your first leaf and your second leaf the two leaves in the bud sometimes these will go wrong and it goes back to the old stock everybody grows different different clones they're developed mm -hmm. in Carriccio mm -hmm. at the tea reserve and they give them all different numbers so um, this area will grow different no, no clones with different numbers and then the other areas grow different ones. This is what they first planted. I don't know if you've ever heard the term the first flush. It's the first tea that comes from that colder part of the world where they have a winter and that first flush is in the spring when it comes after it's been dormant and then they wait another three months and they pick it again and another three months they pick it again and here literally we're picking it all through the year there they're making mostly the green and the white teas mm -hmm. and they would actually just be picking that and even that would probably be a bit big mm -hmm. um, so they pick it very very uh, carefully mm -hmm. and then although it's the same leaf mm -hmm. It's a different way of processing it. Mm. So with black tea, you allow the air to come into it and oxidize it. But with a green tea, you don't. But in this country, likes chai. Yeah. yeah. Green tea does not make good chai. No. <laughs> the purple tea is the same as that. It's actually been developed in Kenya, I'm told. Up in Kuricho, they've introduced all the good things that you get in purple cabbage and blueberry. Oh. All those sort of red fruits, so mm -hmm. like, you know, or purple fruits. And that's what gives us its purple tinge. Mm. Uh, it's very healthy. Mm -hmm. It's an acquired taste. Have you had it? No, I've not no, had no, it. No. It's Before the tea goes to the factory, they're asked to sort through what they've picked. And then the tea gets put into these big sacks. And again, these will hold about a basket full, about 10 kilos. And they're very fancy sacks that go to the factory, but we have cattle, so we cut our cattle food sacks in half. Which Fiona did teach me a lot about tea farming and cultivation. Her family is one of the pioneers of tea farming as well as the founders of Limuru Girls. So they've really done a lot for people around the community. So later on, after the tea farm tour, we went inside the house to have some tea and a few snacks before we headed out to go for another tour in the forest. Thank you. I love tea. I love tea. Yeah. Good. Come and tell him how you'd like it. There is there's hot boiled milk if you like it. Or there's no milk with the lemon. How do you like your tea milk or that? I like my tea black like that yeah. with uh, one teaspoon of sugar. Okay. Just 
do like that the best part about kembetu farm is they do ask you in advance which foods you're allergic to so that they can have that in their menu as they prepare the whole brunch which i felt like was a really good addition to the whole package I say the weather is hot cold <laughs> it is cold but is it really cold you know it's a bit hot but is it really hot <laughs> so i'm in the garden right now it's really pretty look at this i like this so the really nice lady was so kind enough to give us like a tour around the whole plantation and just explain to us how they got into the country and what they have achieved. I, mean, I think this is my favorite thing to see every time I go somewhere. Every time I see flowers for sale. Yes, please. We have potatoes, carrots, broccoli, red cabbages. So even your lunch, you mm -hmm. eat the fresh vegetable from the supermarket. Mm. Somehow they dedicate for the meal. After tea, we were taken on a brief tour to see the whole farm. And they are using by heart. They are not using machines. Mm. So we twice a day. What we do, mm -hmm. we take the roots and then we boil it. Then we mix it with the soup. Mm -hmm. And we give to the women and they give birth to gain the strength. Mm. So we call it piper. What we do, we take the bath and then we boil it. So this is for the stomach ache. Mm. Yes. So you boil it and then you have uh, you drink the water. Light plastic is very useful for roofing the houses, making the chairs, post fence. So it has a lot of work here in Kenya. Mm. And the seed of this come from Indonesia. The hardwood tree and was planted by Fiona's grandfather. So you can mm. see it's a hundred years. Oh. It's a hundred years. So, time to eat some lunch. Vegetarian, that's um, lentils, butternut, uh, butternut bake, somewhat, over there, yeah, and... So starter is garlic and soup, and then a glass of wine, of course, and some iced tea. Going to eat. That's a salad. That's a mixed blend of all the good food, and that's the view. This lunch is good. Was it's over. Done. Finished. All the plates. Okay. Mm -hmm. Some fruits. Some homemade ice cream, chocolate and vanilla. Then you have some chocolate cake and some cream on top of it. And then cheese curd, cashmere, coffee, and tea. Oh, okay. okay, thank you. So you, so you this is dessert. So we've just finished our brunch and it was amazing. It was truly amazing. <laughs> Can't wait to go home, but yeah, it was the best. I enjoyed every second of it. Now we're just gonna take my plants and just head home. Can't wait to come back again. That was honestly the best brunch I've ever had. The host was the best and the mostest, you know. It taught us a lot about the history of this of Kiambetu farm, what her grandmother, her grandfather contributed to the export of tea and coffee um, industry in Kenya. So that was really amazing. You know what? The price works for everybody is 3500 But pass on for the whole tour. You have the tea farm tour, you have the forest tour, you have the house tour, you get some teas or you can drink alcohol, I guess, for those who love alcohol. A whole buffet of food, different selections and types. So 
whichever it suits your type go for it i think it works and honestly i think i can't wait to do this again <laughs> in a very short time it is well affordable it only takes 15 minutes from where i live to here so it's not that far and when if you live in westlands it's gonna take you like 40 minutes or 50 maximum to get here if you're looking for a weekend plan during this quarantine session i think coming to kambeku farm is one of the best decisions you can make it's affordable it's closer and there are no barriers along the way you if you use the banana road yeah can't wait for you guys to see me on the next vlog i hope yeah i'll show you some of the few places that i love in nairobi and just kind of help you not spend way too much on this place See you on the next vlog. Bye.